Good morning, guys. So, for today's uh, lesson for our YouTube channel, we are going to discuss about the mathematical system contains of undefined terms, defined terms, postulate, actions, and uh, theorems. So, let us have the walkthrough for our week 1 and week 2 lessons. So, for our week 1, so mathematical system contains of undefined terms. So, you are expected to describe a mathematical system and illustrate the need for an axiomatic structure of a mathematical system in general and particularly the undefined terms of geometry. Okay, so let us continue. So here is the pre-test that you are going to think up. And after that, uh, these are the recall. Uh, and uh, this time, let us now proceed to our lesson. So in your grade 7 lesson, we will introduce the world of geometry, right? So similar to other fields of mathematics, geometry also has a mathematical system that is made up of uh, undefined terms. Defined terms actions, postulates, and uh, theorems. So, the undefined terms are terms that uh, that cannot be defined because they can only be described or illustrated. So, take note of this. These undefined terms are building blocks of uh, defined terms and actions and uh, postulates. And when we say actions or postulates, these are the statements accepted to be true without a proof. Okay? So on the other hand, the statements that are proven to be true using definitions, actions, postulates, and derived using reasoning and called the theorems. So kapag may reasoning na po, yun ang tinatawag natin na theorems. So, here is the mathematical system. So, for the undefined terms, we have the point, plane, and line. And then, for defined terms, these are the coplanar lines, which are the lines on the same plane. And then, for axioms and postulates, two points determine on a line. And then, theorem, the sum of the measures of the interior angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. So therefore, angle A plus angle B plus angle C is equal to 180 degrees. So let us continue. So undefined terms, so many geometric terms were defined using the undefined terms. So notice that from the given definition of coplanar lines, the words line and the plane were used. The point line and the plane are called the undefined terms. Take note of that. And we cannot define these terms because they can only be described or illustrated. For example, point. It has no length or width but indicates a position or location. It is represented by a dot and name using a capital letter. So, point M. Tawag po natin dyan. Then, when we say line, it has infinite length, no width nor thickness. It extends indefinitely or infinitely in two opposite directions. It is represented by a straight line with two arrow heads. So, ibig sabihin, it is continuous. A line named by two of its points with a symbol written on top of the letters. A line also be named by one small letter or a number. A line has its parts or subsets. Take note of that. Okay? So, for example... We have uh, here uh, line 3 or line N. And then we can call this also as 
line AB, line AC, and line BC. Okay, so before yon. And then, when we say subsets, subsets of a line, ray is a part of a line. Take note of that, ha? Ray is a part of a line that starts at one point and extends infinitely in a set direction. So, for example, ray AB. AB. Okay? We have ray BC. Yan. And then, ray BA. Pwede pabaliktad. And ray CA. Okay? And then, segment is a part of a line that made up of two endpoints. Kapag may endpoint na, so line segment po yan. So, for example, segment AB, segment BC, and segment AC. Yan po yan. Okay? Now, let us proceed to a plane. A plane is a flat surface extending infinitely in all directions. A plane has infinite length, infinite width, but has no thickness. It is usually represented in drawings. By a four-sided figure to name a plane, you can use a capital letter written at the corner or using three collinear points in it. Three collinear points. For example, PST. So, that is a plane. And that is called plane R. Okay, so plane R po yan. Or plane PST. Okay? So, that is a plane. So, another example. Using figure A, name the given line in different ways. So, we have a line AB, AC, AD. Okay? We can say BC, BD. We have CD, and we have BA, kabalik tara naman, CA. Then, DD. And we have DC. Yan. And then, using figure B, name the given plane in different ways. So, we have plane M. So, yung tawag doon. Plane XYZ, pwede rin namang YCX. YCX. So, pwede nyo rambulin itong letters na to. So, that is uh, the name of the plane. Then, example 3, draw and level a figure for each condition. Okay? So, therefore, point E. Saan ba yung point E? Yan. Then, in line T, line T ayaw yan, contains, uh, okay, that, that is uh, point E lies on CD. Lies on CD. So, ito po yan. So, point E lies on CD. And then, for letter B, Line T contains A and B, but that not contain C. So, yung ibig sabihin, nakalahiwala yung C. Doon sa line T. Okay? Then, plane B and E intersect in L. So, line L, yun. It intersect po doon. So, plane D and plane E. So, para lang yung papel na pinaga, nag-cross lang po sila na. Okay, so these are the uh, activities. One, so let's figure, then figure two, uh, activity two, then activity three. Okay, so that's all for week one. And this time, let us now proceed to week two. Okay, so mathematical system, define terms, postulate uh, axioms and uh, theorems. Okay, so ano nga ba nilalaman ng ating week 2 module or module 2? So, you are expected to illustrate the need for an axiomatic structure for a mathematical system in general and particularly the defined terms, postulate, axioms, theorems in geometry. Illustrate a postulate. Identify the postulate applied in a given situation. Justify a given statement by a postulate. Identify theorem applied in a given situation. And last is use the theorem in improving statements. So, here is our lesson for defined terms. So, by the definition, 
definition of collinear points and coplanar points. So when we say collinear points, these are the points that lie on the same plane. And then coplanar points are points that lie on the same plane. So collinear, the same line. Then coplanar, same plane. Okay. Yun lang po. Yun ang ating key words. So point uh, X, Y, and Z are collinear. So ibig sabihin, magkakasama po sila sa isang line. Then, points A, X, Y, and Z are coplanar. Ito yung A, ito yung X, Y, and Z. So, sila ay magkakasama sa plane M. Plane M ang ating name ng ating plane. So, coplanar sila, ibig sabihin, magkakasama sila din sa plane M. Okay? Then, when we say... Uh, definition of parallel lines. So, these are the parallel lines. Okay, so, so once again, pag sinabi natin parallel lines, these slopes are equal. Okay? So, parallel lines are lines in a plane that do not uh, intersect. The symbol for parallel 2 is, yan, dalawang guhit po yan. So, M is parallel to M. Okay? And then, when we say perpendicular, two lines are said to be, per, to be perpendicular lines if they intersect and form right angles. Kagaya na, for example, yung ating mga door, sa mga building, di ba? So, the symbol perpendicular to is, ito po yun. Then, go ahead. Then, parang inverted P. Okay? So, ibig sabihin nito, so, line WY is perpendicular to line XZ. Okay? Definition of midpoint. When we say midpoint, it is a point on the line segment that divides it in two equal parts. So, mid, ibig sabihin, the middle, the halfway point of a line segment, halfway point. So, if B is the midpoint of AC, so, we can say that BA, BA and BC are equal. Or BA, or line BA, and line BC is perpendicular or congruent. Rather, congruent. Okay? So, BA, segment BA is congruent to segment BC. Okay? Angle. So, madali na ito. So, alam na lang yun na. So, when you say an angle, it is a figure formed by two rays with a common point. So, ang common point dito ay B. So, two rays. So, ibig sabihin, ray BA and ray BC. So, that, therefore, this is angle ABC. Or pwede rin naman, CBA. So, galit ka rin lang. Ano? And then, when we say right angle, it is an angle whose measure 90 degrees. Yan, 90 degrees. This, this square corner is used to mark a right angle. So, angle KAP is a right angle. KAP. Pwede rin P-A-K. PAC. Okay. So, angle PAC or angle PAC. So, these are the right angles. And then, when we say vertical angles, so these are the two angles in which the side of one angle are opposite rays to the sides of the other angles. So, for example, angle HGE and angle FGD are vertical angles. So, vertical angles. Alin pa dyan ang pwede maging vertical angles? HGD. And we have FGE. So, vertical angles din yan. So, itong part na to, itong part na yon, and then yung kabila naman. Okay. So, vertical angles yan. At sya, pag sinabi natin vertical angles, so, the measure of the two angles are equal. Okay. Adjacent angles. 
So, if two angles like A and B, itong angle A and angle B, have a common vertex, so ito yung po yung vertex, and the common side, may common side sila, ito yung B, diba ito yun, sa pagitan. So, they are called adjacent angles. Adjacent angles po ito. So, common side, then common vertex. Okay. How about linear fair? So, if two adjacent angles like A and B have their non-common sides forming a straight angle or opposite rays, then they are called linear fair. So, angle A and angle B are linear fair. At pag sinabi natin linear fair sila, so ito yung tinatawag din natin supplementary angles. Ito yun. If the sum of two angles is 180 degrees then they are said to be supplementary angles okay so for example since a measure of angle 1 is 80 and the measure of angle 2 is 100 and the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is 180 degrees then angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary angles Ito po yun. Then, ito yung linear pair niya. Another one. Since angle 3 is 145 degrees, ito po yun. And angle 4 is 35 degrees. Matari naman yun. And angle 3 plus angle 4 is equal to 180 degrees. Then, angle 3 and angle 4 are supplementary angles. Yan. How about naman complementary angles? So, ang pagkakaiba ng supplementary at complementary, sa supplementary meron tayong 180 degrees. And then sa complementary naman ay meron tayong 90 degrees. So, if the sum of the two, of the measures of two angles is 100 or 90 degrees, then they are said to be complementary angles. So, example, since the measure of angle A is 20 degrees and the measure of angle B is 70 degrees and the measure of angle A plus measure of angle B is 90 degrees, then A, angle A and angle B are complementary angles. So, yan, complementary. Then, another one. Since the measure of angle C is 75 degrees, ito po yun, and the measure of angle D, angle D is 15 degrees. And angle C plus angle D is equal to 90 degrees. Then angle C and angle D are complementary angles. And take note that supplementary and complementary angles may not be adjacent. So hindi po pwedeng maging adjacent sila. How about this one? Definition of angle bisector. Pag sinabi natin angle bisector, it is a ray that divides an angle into two congruent angles. So, two congruent angles. So, if OB or ray OB is an angle bisector, then the measure of AOB, angle AOB, and the measure of angle BOC are equal or angle AOB is congruent to measure of uh, angle BOC. So, yun po yun. Then, another one, definition of segment by sector. So, segment by sector is a point, a line, or a segment that divides the, the segment into two congruent parts. So, for example, if ray KM, ito po yung ray KM natin, by Zex, or by Zex, line LM, ito po yung line LM, then LM is equal to MM. Okay? So, kasi po, may segment by sector. So, into two congruent parts na divide po yung dalawa. Okay? Then, right, ha? The conclusion to complete if then statement justify your answer by using the 
definitions. So for example, segment JAM. If A is the midpoint of JM, then, ano masasabi natin? JA is equal to AM. Since A is the midpoint of JM, then JA is equal to JM by the definition of midpoint. About this one. If angle TSU and angle TSB form a linear pair, so TSU, then TSB. So, therefore, definition of linear pair TSU, angle TSU, and angle TSB are adjacent to them. So, adjacent angle to them. How about this one? If OM, nasan pa yung OM natin? Ito, ray OM is perpendicular to light LN, then we can say that uh, angle MON, nasan yung MON, is a right angle. So, by the definition of uh, perpendicular lines. Okay. Kasi, since meron tayong perpendicular lines, ibig sabihin, ito ay right angle. Another one, if angle C and angle D are complementary angles and the measure of angle C is 53, then the measure of angle D is how much? So, 53 minus, uh, uh, 90 minus 53, we have 37. So, the measure of angle D is 37. This is by the definition of a complementary angles. Okay? So, madali lang yan. Ano ba? Okay? So, so ito yung, yung activity 1. Then, let us now proceed to mathematical system which is called the postulate. Okay? So, postulates are statements that are assumed to be true without proof. So, notice from the activity above that through two given points A and B, only one line can be drawn through them. This is as stated in the following postulate. So, for example, the line postulate. For every two points, there is exactly one line that contains both points. So, that is true naman, di ba? Then, the, po the plane postulate. Any three points lie in at least one plane and three non-collinear points lie in exactly one plane and three points are always coplanar and non-collinear points x, y, z lie on the plane M. so yan po yan okay how about this one the flat plane postulate if two points of a line lie in a plane so yan, nasa loob sila ng plane then the same, then the line lies on in the same plane. Points X and Y or X and Z lie in a plane M. Therefore, line X Z also lie on plane M. And this postulate describes the flatness of the plane. So flatness. Okay. How about this one? The plane intersection. Postulate. If two different planes intersect, so nag intersect po sila, then their intersection is a line. So, nagkaroon nyo ng line. So, pwede nyo maging line dyan ay at M. Okay? Intersect at at M. So, plane K and plane S intersect at line at M. So, you know, in your activity 2. Then, this time, let us now proceed to mathematical system axioms. So, when we say axiom, it is a mathematical statement that is accepted to be true without any proof. In general, we use postulate in geometry that was being discussed in the 
plus module and action in other sections of mathematics. These are useful in proving theorems and other statements in geometry. Okay? So listed below are some of the actions of the real numbers and equality often used in algebra and geometry. So claim a property of equality, equalities. So reflexive property of equality. So A is equal to A. And then B is equal to B. C is equal to C. Symmetric property of equality. If A is equal to B, then B is equal to A. Reflexive. So are symmetric. Okay. And then transitive naman. Property of equality. If A is equal to B, then B is equal to C. Then A is equal to C. So pagay ng ginawa natin dun sa ano sa reasoning okay then addition property of equality if a is equal to b then a plus c is equal to b plus c or if a is equal to b and c is equal to b then a plus c is equal to b plus b okay and then subtraction property of equality kabalik taran lang nung addition if a is equal to b then a minus c is equal to b minus C. And then multiplication property of equality if A is equal to B then AC is equal to BC. Okay? Then division property of equality if A is equal to B and C should not be equal to 0 then A over C or A divided by C is equal to B divided by C. And then substitution property, if A is equal to B, then A may be replaced by B in A equation. So, it is substitution property of equality. And usually, ito yung ginagamit natin sa checking of values in the linear equation. So, ito yung recap na lamang para sa inyo kasi na-discuss na natin yung nung kayo ay grade 7. How about the properties of congruence? So, kagaya nung sa property of equality, so, ito naman, congruence yung ating ginagamit. Reflexive property of congruence, AB is congruent to AB. Then, symmetric property of congruence, if line AB is congruent to line CD, then CD is congruent to AB. Kabalik na rin, no? pinabalik na rin. Interchange the two sides. Then transitive property of a congruence if angle A is congruent to angle B and angle B is congruent to angle C, then A's angle A is congruent to angle C. So, medyo kahawit lang siya ng ating properties of equality. Okay? So, for example, number one. If AB is a real number, then AB is equal to AB. So, that is a reflexive property of equality. So, magaling nyo na na. Examples natin. Then, these are the activity 3 that we are going to do. So, for example, use the given property to complete each statement. So, gagamitin natin symmetric property. If angle J is congruent to angle K, then symmetric pra siya, so sasabihin natin, angle AK is congruent to angle J. Okay, so ganun lang. And then, to run naman tayo ang mathematical system. So, consider the statement, line, point, line, children. Given a line and a point, not on the line. There is exactly one plane containing both the line and the point. So, for example, this one. Narating yung isang point, narating yung isang line. So, is the statement true? Are there postulates actions that can justify the given statement? So, let us proceed. So, point Points H, I, and J are non-collinear points. Non-collinear. So, ibig sabihin, hindi sila magkasama sa 
isang line. So, proofs or points H, I, and J are non-collinear points by plain postulate. Any three non-collinear points lie exactly in one plane. Also, by line postulate, any two points determine a straight line. So, it's a plane top. Therefore, there is exactly one plane containing IJ, line IJ, and point H. Okay. So, from undefined and defined terms, so we can make the axioms and postulates, and then we can prove, and then this, therefore, it is now the theorem. So, ang proof natin can be written in paragraph form, flowchart, or commonly with two-column proof. Ayan. So, ito yung mga line intersection theorem. So, lines one, uh, L1, uh, line 1 and L, line 2 intersect at point P. And then, line N intersects plane C at point M. So, ibig sabihin, kung itong yung papel, so, nabutas siya ng isang stick. Parang ganun. Okay? Then, triangle angle sum theorem, measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C is equal to 180 degrees. So, if in every triangle, the sum of the measures of the two interior angles is 180 degrees. So, yan. So, ito po yung tinatawag natin two column proof. So, this is the given. Angle AOB and angle BOC BOC ito yan. Form a linear pair. Okay, linear pair. Then, prove angle AOB and angle BOC are supplementary angles. So, this are the answer. So, this statement angle AOB and angle BOC are linear pair and this is the given. Lagi yun ng unang tinatamaan natin yung given. Then, ray AO, OA yung OA and OC are opposite rays. So, of course, opposite rays. And that is definition of linear pair. Then, the measure of Angle AOC is 180 degrees. That is the definition of a straight angle. So, kung linear pair ito, opposite rays. So, definition of a straight angle, ibig sabihin, yun ay 180 degrees. Therefore, we can say that uh, measure of angle AOB plus the measure of angle BOC is equal to the measure of angle AOC. And that is angle addition postulate. Nagkaroon tayo ng angle addition postulate. And then by substitution property of equality, angle AOB, ito, AOB plus the measure of angle BOC is equal to 180 degrees. Kasi itong dalawang ito ay equal. Diba? Substitution property of equality. So, therefore, we can say that angle AOB and angle BOC are supplementary. Supplementary. And that is the definition of supplementary angles. Okay? So, yun ang ating example na. Another example. So, angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary. And angle 3 and angle 2 are supplementary then. 2 and 3. Prove that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. So, ibig sabihin, magkakaroon lang tayo dito ng transitive property of equality. Yeah. Okay? Vertical angle theorem. Angle 1 and angle 3 are vertical angles formed by intersecting lines R and S. R and S. Prove that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. So, yun ang tinatawag natin 
intersecting lines we have vertical and they are linear pair theorem and the supplemental theorem okay so one activity four entity so two column three column one one okay so that's all for our quarter one week one and week two so hoping na nakatulong itong ating uh, ng munting video para masagotan ninyo yung apat na activities na binigay natin dun sa loob ng week 1 and week 2 ok so that's all so thank you at uh, hoping na masagotan ang mga learning pa sa ating Google Classroom ok so once again Please subscribe our YouTube channel and click the notification bell and like our video.